So what does a $1,700 gaming PC look like in 2024? What parts should you buy? How easy would it be to build? And what kind of performance can you expect? This build is actually for a friend who gave me a budget of $1,700. She wanted an all white build with new components only. She's already chosen a PC case and wants to be able to game and do creative work on this PC. For this budget, if you are going Intel, I would recommend going for the 14700K as it's a well-balanced CPU for both gaming and productivity. However, I will be using a previous gen CPU, the 13700K, because I actually bought the CPU just before the 14700K was released. Funnily enough, the price and performance isn't actually that much different, but definitely go with the 14700K as it only costs a few dollars more and you get a nice tiny spec bump. AMD 7800X 3D is also a good option to consider too, when compared to the 14700K or the 13700K. It performs just as well and is slightly cheaper. All three CPUs have certain games that tend to perform better on. Gamers Nexus has an excellent video out on YouTube comparing the 14700K to a whole range of CPUs, so go check that out. But for a gaming slash creative work PC, the 13700K and 14700K is the better choice. The ASUS ROG Strix B7060A would be enough for this build. It's compatible with the 12th and 13th gen CPUs and also the latest 14th gen. As long as the motherboard comes with the latest firmware, if not, the board also has a handy flash BIOS. There's plenty of USB ports and it comes with Wi-Fi 6 and a 2.5G Ethernet port. There are three PCIe M.2 slots with bridge heat sinks for passive cooling. So there's no need to worry about those tiny noisy cooling fans that some of these motherboards come with. Ideally, I wanted a white motherboard to match everything else but the silver and black aesthetic looks good too. Make sure you peel off all the plastic on the board. They're hard to see and there is quite a few of them. Locate the corner arrow on the CPU, correctly orientate it like so, seat it into the socket, pull down a lever and hook it into place. I tend to prep the motherboard as much as I can before inserting it into the case as I'm used to building ITX PCs. So grab the CPU cooler mount. I've gone with the Kraken 240 RGB by NZXT. More on that later. Flip over the board, place the mount, and screwing the standoffs. We've gone with a two terabyte M.2 drive, which is plenty storage. It has fast read and write speeds, which is ideal for this gaming PC, as it would also be used for creative applications and big files. Pop the drive in the main M.2 slot and cover it up with the heatsink. If my friend needs more storage later down the line, there is another two slots that she can easily access to add more storage. We're using DDR4 since they are more affordable than DDR5 and have more motherboard options to choose from at a cheaper price. 32GB should be enough. These are Vengeance RGB Pro by Corsair in white, which should go nicely with our white theme. My friend wanted a case that was not too big but not too small, one in which she could easily access and change components when necessary and importantly has good airflow. We've gone with the H5 Flow RGB by NZXT, a mid-tower case. It's quite a popular case with good reviews. It's known for its minimalistic aesthetic, spacious interior, and good airflow, hence the name H5 Flow. This case comes with two front RGB fans and one non-RGB at the back. A GPU dedicated fan at the bottom, which is positioned at an angle that I haven't seen before in a PC case. There are removable mesh panels for the front, top, and bottom of the case, making it super easy to clean. The screws are nicely organized, but I would prefer they came in a labeled case than this plastic bag. Let's go ahead and place the motherboard in the case. Make sure it lines up at the back with the IO shield going through the cutout and then secure the motherboard. We've gone with the Kraken 240 RGB in white by NZXT, mainly for the aesthetic of this build and to link all the fans to the cam software. I really like the LC display as it'll be handy for my friend to easily monitor the temperatures. It's a nice looking CPU block. It comes with thermal paste pre-applied and the radiators come with two RGB fans. For the orientation of the radiator, I'm following the manufacturer's manual recommendation, which is mount the radiator to the top with the tubes dangling down. Line up the radiator, screw it in place, pop the magnetic dust filter back on, and screw in the RGB fans to have them extract the heat upwards towards the radiator and out the case. The CPU block comes with thermal paste, so you can just go ahead and pop that right onto the CPU chip and secure it with the screws. For power, we've gone with 750 watts by Corsair. It's gold certified and fully modular, and will be more than enough power for this PC with room for it to go high if needed. The cables that come with the PSU are made from mesh, which is really strong, making it not that flexible compared to the braided cables, which I prefer. 
Insert the cables and place the power supply in the case and secure it. We'll also remove the exhaust fan that came with this case and replace it with a F120 RGB fan by NZXT. So now that's a total of five RGB fans in which we can control via their software. So here we've gone with the RTX 4060 Ti, more specifically the Gigabyte Aero OCRTX 8GB edition, a card that's slightly more expensive than the regular 4060 Ti cards because of its design. The AMD equivalent would be the RX 7700 XT, which can cost more than or even equal in price to the RTX 4060 Ti, depending on what version you compare it to, but you can expect to get more FPS with the RX 7700 XT. I chose the 4060 Ti because my friend prefers Nvidia, and this card requires less power and is better for creative apps. For performance, this is a great card for 1080p gaming at max settings to ultra. It's even great for 1440p gaming with settings sitting between ultra and medium. And you can push this card even further to 4K gaming if you wanted to and still get decent FPS from ultra to low settings. It really depends on what game it is and what settings you have within the game. Obviously, don't expect all games to run well at 4K on this card. If you want to know more about the 4060 Ti, I would recommend watching a video by Linus Tech Tips. He's made a really good video comparing it to other cards. For a 4060 Ti, it's a fairly chunky card. It's a two and a half slot GPU with three fans and a vent on the back, which should assure us that this card was built to be kept cool. Before I organize this mess, I always turn on the PC to see if everything works okay. It saves me time having to undo the cable management if something is wrong. One of my favorite parts of building a PC is actually cable management. There's something therapeutic about organizing this mess of cables. And luckily for us, this case makes it easy for me to organize. With that all done, let's see how everything looks. For a 4060 Ti build, you could say this is a bit overkill. You can certainly put together a cheaper build if you only intend to use it for just gaming, and you're not bothered about having a certain aesthetic. But I'm happy with the way this build has turned out. For me, it looks aesthetically pleasing. It's super quiet and it performs well. On Ultra settings, Rainbow Six Siege and Call of Duty maintain a high average FPS. I was surprised to see Fortnite below 100 FPS, but I think that's down to a lot of unnecessary settings that I turned on that didn't provide much visual improvement, and all it did was lower the FPS. The 4060 Ti stayed cool throughout all the games, with temps mainly between 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Thanks to the case design, there is exceptional airflow keeping it nice and cool at a good noise level. Power consumption levels are low too. With both the GPU and CPU combined, you're looking at around 220 to 240 watts. And if you compare the RTX 4060 Ti to the 4080, both playing the same game at 1080p in ultra settings, you're roughly looking at 140% difference in power consumption between the two cards. To get the RGBs looking the way you want them to, you would have to download four separate apps. It would have been better if you could manage all the lighting in one app, but you can't. Fortunately, the main lights like the case fans and CPU block display can be controlled via NZXT's CAM software, which is really easy to use. The light on the motherboard is controlled via the ASUS Aura app, the light on the 460 Ti is controlled via the RGB Fusion app. And finally, the lights for the Vengeance RGB Pro is controlled via Corsair's IQ app. This PC is easy and fun to build. One thing I would change is buying a custom GPU cable so that this connector isn't sticking out. For this build, you are paying for the customization, but for me, Part of the fun is building a PC to look a certain way that you like and performs the task and games you need it for. For around $1,700, I think this build is a great template for anyone who needs a gaming slash creative work PC with excellent performance and cooling that you don't need to worry about. I'll have all the parts listed down below in the description if you want to build something similar. As always, a huge thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.